The Wild West is a time of lawlessness, danger, and adventure. It was a time when men risked everything to become rich and make a name for themselves. Among the old legends of the Old West, one name stands out, Henry Hooker. He was a famous and wealthy rancher in the Old West who established the first and largest American ranch in the Arizona Territory. But his story is not just about wealth and power, it is a story about friendship, loyalty. Hooker was a personal friend of Wyatt Earp, one of the most famous figures in Western history. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Henry Clay Hooker was born on January 10, 1828 on a farm in Hinsdale, New Hampshire that was passed down through his family. His father, Henry C. Hooker Sr., was a descendant of early New, An New England leader Thomas Hooker and his mother was Mary Daggett. Henry is sixth out of ten siblings. He grew up in an intellectual family so he understands the value of hard work and perseverance. At the time, the United States was still a young and developing country, full of promise. In 1848, he moved first to New York City and then in 1849 to Kansas City, Missouri. There he worked hard for the Department of Indians. But the attraction of the Wild West moved him strongly. In 1852, he embarked on a journey to El Dorado County, California during the California Gold Rush, hoping to become rich. There, Henry found love. He met Elizabeth Rockwell, a beautiful and intelligent woman, born in Erie, Pennsylvania. On March 19, 1856, they married and began to live together. After trying his hand at mining, they quickly moved to Hangtown, California, later renamed Placerville in the 1860s. There, Henry began opening a shop and selling supplies to miners, those who aspire to make a living in the rugged and unspoiled land. Occasionally, he buys and drives cattle east through the Sierra to sell to Comstock load miners in the area and around Carson City and Genoa, Nevada. His business began to thrive. Sometime later, Henry and Elizabeth welcomed three children Ida M. Hooker was born on May 3, 1858. Edwin R. Hooker was born on February 27, 1861. And Joseph M. Hooker was born on September 4, 1863. On August 10, 1865, a great fire consumed much of Hangtown, including Henry Hooker's home and business. Henry and his family only survived with the $1,000 he had saved up. Devastated by the loss of his business and home, Hooker sought to rebuild his capital. With a keen business mind, he decided to sell raw turkeys to Comstock load miners who were willing to pay big dollars for the meat. To carry out his plan, Hooker purchased 500 turkeys from local ranchers at a generous price of $1.50 each, approximately $27 in today's money. He also bought two dogs to help him manage the herd. He hires a man and begins his journey across the treacherous Sierra Nevada Mar Mountains, where he faced many near-death experiences, including the moment the herd nearly fell off a high cliff. But Hooker's determination prevailed. He did his best to regain control of the turkeys and lead them to safety in the valley below. Upon arriving in Carson City, Hooker sold the turkeys for $5 each, making a sizable profit of about $1,750, approximately $31,000 in today's money. Hooker, who was known by the honorary title of Colonel Hooker, arrived in the Arizona Territory in 1867, achieving great success in the turkey business. He wasted no time establishing a cattle ranch to supply beef to the army. In 1872, he brought over 10,000 Texas Longhorns from Texas itself. During one of his herds that same year, his herd grazed on the lush lawns of Sulphur Springs Valley found between Mount Graham and Mount Galeruro. At 1,200 meters above sea level, the valley is grassy up to 12 to 20 inches tall, a haven for Hooker's cattle. However, 
The ever-present threat of Apache attacks prevented permanent settlement until after the Civil War ended. It wasn't until a U.S. Army post was built at Camp Grant, located about 16 kilometers to the east, and in the Santa Cruz and San Pedro Valleys, new Indian attacks subsided. The story of Colonel Hooker's Sierra Bonita Ranch is a story of resilience and determination. Hooker was mesmerized by the picturesque valley and despite the constant threat of Apache attacks. He saw its potential as a grazing ground. He founded the farm in 1872 and named it Sierra Bonita. The farm has spectacular views of the nearby mountains. Hooker faced many challenges during his early years, including attacks by local Apaches, causing him to build a fortress of burnt bricks to protect his family and workers. The lush landscape has allowed him to graze up to 15,500 cattle on the ranch, making it an important part of the Arizona Territory's cattle industry. By 1891, there were 1.5 million cattle raised on pasture. Despite this success, tragedy struck, a catastrophic drought in 1891 that killed more than half of the livestock due to severe overgrazing. While many ranchers were forced to give up, Hooker refused to be defeated. He founded the Sierra Bonita Land and Stock Company, expanded the ranching operation to 250,000 acres and supported an additional 20,000 cattle. His facility gradually became productive again, and he became one of the few Arizona ranchers to survive the drought. Efforts to restore livestock lands between 1905 and 1934 had had limited success, but cattle ranching continued on a smaller scale. Despite the challenges he faced, Hooker's cattle ranching was successful and it was a testament to his perseverance and endurance. Today, the Sierra Bonita Ranch is a historic landmark that continues to inspire those who hear its story. Around that time, Hooker happened to have also hired Billy the Kid before he became famous during the Lincoln County War. Hooker, like many ranchers and businessmen in the day, supported attorneys Virgil and Wyatt Earp. On March 27, 1882, following the Earp Vendetta ride, Hooker helped the Earps and his companions safely leave the Arizona Territory. Henry Hooker died on December 5, 1907, at his dear Sierra Bonita Ranch. At the time of his death, he was the wealthiest rancher in Arizona, a testament to his dedication and hard work. The Sierra Bonita Ranch continues to grow and is run by Henry Hooker's niece, Harry Hooker, who inherited the family's cattle-raising legacy. Jesse Hooker Davis, Henry Hooker's great-grandson, took over management from his grandmother, Jacqueline Hooker Hughes, in 2012, further cementing the Hooker family's connection to the land. In recognition of its historical significance, Sierra Bonita Ranch was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1964. Although the ranch is not open to the public, its preservation serves as a reminder about the remarkable achievements of Henry Hooker and his family. Henry Hooker's contributions to the American West were also honored in 1959, when he was inducted into the Hall of Great Westerners and the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. The Hall of Great Westerners was established by the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1958. Located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the hall was established to honor the contributions of more than 200 men and women in the American West. Inductees included explorers, Native American leaders, writers, poets, politicians, statesmen, and others. Henry Hooker is a notable figure in the history of the American West. He enjoyed tremendous success as a cattle rancher, becoming the richest man in Arizona at the time of his death. But he's more than that. He's a true pioneer who, despite facing countless challenges, with determination and perseverance, achieved success. Henry Hooker was also a man of courage and integrity, as evidenced by his friendship with the legendary Wyatt Earp. Henry Hooker left a lasting legacy in the West, one that continues to inspire us today. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.